Today we are justice come to life. Do we look like Lady Justice? <laughs> Flawless execution. So typically Lady Justice is blindfolded to show that justice is impartial and equal. To demonstrate that, we are going to do a blind justice challenge. In the blind justice challenge, we have one minute on the clock and wearing blindfolds, we have to choose blocks to place on the scale to equal one pound. You can't talk to each other about what you're choosing. Place the weighted blocks on the scale in front of you. The goal is to make both scales be equal. Because whatever the difference is between the two scales is the weight of crickets. Uh, must eat. Oh, that must be what these are back here for. That's what those crickets are for. Do, okay. Do, do, do. Oh, don't look at it. Don't, it looks so bad. Don't look at it. Don't. Okay. Oh, it doesn't smell as bad as you'd think. Don't smell them. Oh, they still have their eyes. That bothers don't me. I, they look. <laughs> Like crickets. It smells like dog food. <sighs> okay, so let's get blindfolded. Oh, blindfolds, right. Oh, and blindfold check. How many fingers am I holding up? I don't know. Great. Okay, so let's start the challenge. Is there a minute on the clock? Yep. Great, oh, we're going. Are we oh. going? We're no, going. No. I have a feeling we are both gonna eat a substantial amount of crickets today. I don't know how much things weigh. Whoa. I, oh no, okay. Wait, I think, ooh, that feels too heavy. That feels, oh, oh no. Ah, okay, uh, that's my guess. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go with that. The sound <sighs> of our impending doom. Okay. Ah, my crown. All right. And my beanie. Let's take a look. How do we do? Oh, no. Oh, what'd you do? No, I was so far off. Um, I had nine ounces. You were so close, I Jamie. I was decently no! close. Mine's at, yeah, mine's at nine. Jamie's is like at 14. So that's five ounces of crickets that you guys have to eat between the two of you. I've doomed us all, Jamie. I'm so sorry. You guys were close. The right answer is this one and this one and that one makes a pound. Ooh, snacks. <gasps> Who's ready for a pop quiz? Hey, it's quiz man. That's, those are awful. I hit a hard part. I'm the quiz man, it's still in my teeth. Lady Justice, what a gal. She's typically depicted with four things. Which of these things is she not typically depicted with? Is it A, a blindfold, B, a clock, C, a scale, or D, a sword? Did you pay attention to that last bit? If you said A and you paid attention to that last bit, you didn't pay attention to that last bit. If you said B, then you are correct. Lady Justice is typically depicted with a blindfold to be impartial, a scale for balance, and a sword for authority. That's how the world depicts justice. How does the Bible depict justice? Let's cut right here and go do something else so I can get some water for that cricket taste in my mouth. If you were a praying mantis, it would be socially acceptable to devour your mate. And if you're a honey badger, you have no regard for other animals. You don't care. If you're a panda with twins, it's normal to abandon one to take care of the other. But if humans do any of these things, we would call it wrong, unfair, or unjust. Yeah, why is that? Why do humans care so much about justice? Well, the Bible has a fascinating response to that question. On page one, humans are set apart from all other creatures as the image of God. Yeah, God's representatives who rule the world by his definition of good and evil. And this identity, it's the bedrock of the Bible's view of justice. All humans are equal before God and have the right to be treated with dignity and fairness no matter who you are. And that would be nice if we all did that, but we know how the world really works. And the Bible addresses that too. It shows how we are constantly redefining good and evil to our own advantage at the expense of others. Yeah, self-preservation. And the weaker someone is, the easier it is to take advantage of them. And so in the biblical story, we see this happening on a personal level, but also in families and then in communities and in whole civilizations that create injustice, especially towards the vulnerable. But the story doesn't end there. Out of this whole mess, God chose a man named Abraham to start a new kind of family. Specifically, Abraham was to teach his family to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. 
Yeah, doing righteousness, that's a Bible word I don't really use, but what comes to mind is being a good person. But what does that even mean, being good? The biblical Hebrew word for righteousness is tzedakah, and it's more specific. It's an ethical standard that refers to right relationships between people. It's about treating others as the image of God. With the God-given dignity they deserve. And this word justice, it's the Hebrew word mishpat. It can refer to retributive justice. Like if I steal something, I pay the consequences. Exactly. Yet most often in the Bible, mishpat refers to restorative justice. It means going a step further, actually seeking out vulnerable people who are being taken advantage of and helping them. Yeah, some people call this charity. But mishpat involves way more. It means taking steps to advocate for the vulnerable and changing social structures to prevent injustice. So justice and righteousness are about a radical, selfless way of life. Yeah, and you find this idea all over the Bible. So we all participate in injustice, actively or passively, even unintentionally. We're all the guilty ones. And so this is the surprising message of the biblical story. God's response to humanity's legacy of injustice is to give us a gift, the life of Jesus. He did righteousness and justice, and yet he died on behalf of the guilty. But then God declared Jesus to be the righteous one when he rose from the dead. And so now Jesus offers his life to the guilty so that they too can be declared righteous before God, not because of anything they've done, but because of what Jesus did for them. The earliest followers of Jesus experienced this righteousness from God, not just as a new status, but as a power that changed their lives and compelled them to act in surprising new ways. Yeah, if God declared someone righteous when they didn't deserve it, The only reasonable response is to go and seek righteousness and justice for others. This is a radical way of life, and it's not always convenient or easy. It's courageously making other people's problems my problems. This is what Jesus meant by loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about a lifetime commitment fueled by the words of the ancient prophet Micah. God has told you, humans, what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. It's all out and out. Jamie, all you gotta do is fix your mind on the idea that these are just sunflower seeds. These are these are just you're eating peanuts. They're so good. Mmm, Jamie. Ah, ah. Just don't look at it. Just look at me. Let's have a conversation and enjoy some crickets. It's really just like the flavor and the texture that's getting me. <laughs> Tasted like crickets. Trail mix. It's just like trail mix. Like oh, like a bunch of crunched up trail mix. It's just like that. It changed this whole experience. Bottoms up, Jamie. Let's go for the rest of them. Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> So that's sad to think about something not being fair. Uh, Ask it's... yourself, am I eating crickets right now? <laughs> Probably not. If you open up your eyes, you can see the way that God designed justice and fairness. Clearly, you can see it. God turned off your, oh, I said one, it's in my hair. It's in my hair. Open up your eyes. Justice is a beautiful thing. Enjoy the ride! Ah! Bleh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>